Hey guys, Kevin Siv here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the BCR01 Kamen Rider Build Rabbit Tank form from Kamen Rider Build. This is the first entry in this year's action figure gimmick line. And of course, for that we need to start with the base form. This includes two things, the figure itself and one accessory. So, let's get started. So, let's take a look at the figure. Design-wise, Kamen Rider Build is similar to Kamen Rider Double in that a big theme of his is asymmetry. But, unlike Double, who was split pretty cleanly down the middle, a big theme for Build is being a lot more asymmetrical than that, just that, and we can take a look at it as we look at the design. Starting off, we have the head, where you can first see the big design aspect, which is that He's basically designed to have these diagonal lines running this way all throughout the body. You can see it flowing completely down the body. And even the lines on his arms and legs flow in the same direction. So even that part is asymmetrical. One of the big things about his helmet is the way his eyepieces are. You can see that they're both asymmetrical in color, but they're also uniquely designed to the two parts of each form. So for this one, we have the rabbit half and the tank half. For the rabbit half, the eyepiece forms the shape of a rabbit head. And for the tank ha half, the eyepiece forms the shape of a tank. And it is pretty clever. and makes it so that it is a little bit more visually interesting. Coming down to the bite, you can see that each piece also has a part that sticks out to the side. For the rabbit half, it's a rabbit ear, and for the tank half, it's a tank barrel, and these two both line up right here. We can see that he has the build driver down here, which actually has some nice paint detail on it. You can see silver right here, as well as painted metallic red and metallic blue for the two balls. Though this will kind of complicate things later on, as the, the big gimmick of this series is switching and creating mix and match forms, so... When we later do some switching, that's going to make the look a little bit inconsistent. But you can also see that the belt straps are actually painted yellow all the way around, which is a nice touch. And also that there is a mix of metallic paints, such as on the head and body, as well as just simple plastic colors, like for the arms. But they don't, uh, they don't contrast too bad, and they still look pretty good together. Coming down to the legs, we can again see those aspects that I showed. And here's where we can see the unique features of these two halves. For the rabbit half, you've got a spring on one leg, then a rabbit's foot. And for the tank half, you have this foot looking like a tank with tank treads going all around. And this is actually the only form where the differences or the unique features of each half are on the legs. For all the rest so far, that we've seen they're going to be on the arms. So, looking at the back, we again see those stripes continuing all the way down. And unfortunately, uh, it's not really painted much on the back except for the bell straps. But at the very least, we do get the color of the arms all the way around to the back since it's the basic plastic color. Now, articulation is where uh, people are probably going to find or at least some people are going to find a point of contention. As it is missing two points of articulation that have been present for many years now, which are the head and the waist. So besides that, we have the typical 360 rotation at the shoulders. Go in and out on a swivel joint. Have a bicep swivel. Seen joint elbows. Wrist swivel. And two finger joints. And for legs, they go forward and back, in and out, have a thigh swivel, 
single joint knee and ball joint ankle so you are missing a little bit compared to some of the previous right figures but this is a consequence of the gimmick and so getting into that we actually get into how to split this into half so you have a bun back here which will separate the figure but you have to hold it in a specific way because you want to be pushing off this half and this is basically easy to do if you're holding it so that you're moving it apart by moving the left leg forward. So you press the button down while pulling it apart. Now we'll separate it into two halves. And here we see even more uh, asymmetry. Now if you'll notice, the segments basically go in a triangle pattern to where it has one side of the head so for example for rabbit we have the left side of the head right side of the body and then the left leg and vice versa for the tank half and unlike the double form chain series that connected in the middle or from front to back basically side to side this connects actually front to back Here we can see the halves go together and come apart like that and we see that because of the way they're designed, it wouldn't have really been that easy to actually have articulation while having the art, you know, having the same gimmick, unless it came apart into more pieces. And the thing is that with these gimmick figure lines, they don't really like a lot of parts coming off. But this is what is going to let us do mixing and matching to create different trial forms later on. And it is nice that they snap together quite well. And then come apart pretty easily, though it is a little bit tricky at first. So when you first get the figure, you probably don't want to, instead of trying to use the button to push them apart, just pull them pull it apart at the waist. Figure also comes with the drill crusher in blade mode. You can see it's molded here in all black, but it's got a lot of nice detail. You can see everything on the handle from all the gauges to the lever and even the slot for the uh, full ball. Which actually seems to have a molded in full ball, which is a nice little touch. And then the drill, which has the spiral drill pattern, as well as the bits on the ends. Though it does have some hollow holes in the back, which is pretty standard for a weapon like this. And of course, you can have him hold it using the uh, finger system or the joint system of these fingers. And it holds pretty well. Though if you shake it around, it will wiggle a little bit, but it certainly won't drop it. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to the figure. The unfortunate thing is that there is only one of these right now, so there's not really much else we can do with it since we can't mix and match with any other figures just yet. And there we go. So overall, despite its limitations, I still think that this is a very good figure and a good start to the Ball Change Rider series. While yes, it is limited in its articulation in that it's missing head and waist articulation, which might be a turn off for some, I still appreciate what articulation they gave it and the fact that they really still put a lot of effort into the paint and detail work, especially in that it's nice that they finally started adding some paint to the belt, even if later on that's going to make it a little bit inaccurate when you do some of the form changing. But, at the very least, it does add to the detail of the best matches. Not to mention that later on you will be able to mix and match this with other faders. While there is already the Soto line for the series out which are you know smaller and do have stickers but do technically have a little bit more articulation I still personally am going to be collecting these and I think I will enjoy these because I personally like to have my fears being scaled to one another and I'd rather not drop this to switch over to the smaller fears that won't really be in scale with all my others and I still think that you can pose it quite well, even without the head and waist articulation. And, you know, for times like that, when 
it's more limited. My philosophy is to try changing the angle that the figure is posed in. Maybe giving it a slight turn to make it look like he's looking at you from a different direction, or just having him face in a different direction altogether. I think that, really, the way you pose him can make up for the uh, missing points of articulation. I think the only other thing to take in mind, or to keep in mind with this series, is that it seems to have a bit of a longer turnaround time for each of the forms, meaning that for each form that debuts, it's going to take a couple of weeks for that form's figure to come out. And since there's currently only one figure for this line out right now, I'd say if you want to get into this, at least wait until this weekend when the second figure, which is Gorilla Mond, releases. And that way you can buy two of them at the same time, and at least you'll start out having two figures that you can swap with each other. Or if you want to go even further, you might want to wait until the third figure, which is Hawk Gatling form, comes out. That way you can buy three and then have a lot more potential when it comes to mixing and matching. Whatever you decide to do, I personally will be continuing on with the series and I will be buying and reviewing the rest of the figures. So, you know, while I don't think this is a bad figure, I can certainly understand why some might not want to buy it. But... If you give it a shot, it might be worth your while. So, next time I'll be bringing the Hiho Yokai Emblem and Kaseki Mel Set 03. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you're new and would like to see more, please subscribe. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.